Okay, so welcome back to Live with Friends. Today I'm with my friend Lauren Boza. Hi. Welcome. Hey, thank you, thank you. Oh my gosh, of course. Um, so many questions. Uh, you are a photographer. Correct, yes, I am. You are. And um, you just graduated from New World, correct? Yeah, I just graduated, um, I think in May. <laughs> It yeah. was like well, forever ago, but yeah, in May I graduated. Time flies and it's crazy. So how would you describe your photography to someone that has never seen your work? Um, I think prior to going to New World, I had a very, um, I guess like street photography type of approach where I wasn't too fond of setting up an image. I was more just looking for an image when I was out and about or maybe hanging out with friends. Um, and then when I started going to New World, I started to practice more of like a conceptual approach to photography. So yeah, my, my uh, projects became more intentional with thought as compared to how I was photographing before. But um, I, I still very much enjoy shooting imagery in a raw sense and um, I feel like it's a big part of how I photograph and I love to photograph people so you'll always see people um for the most part in my in my images so that's awesome how why um so you would say that you started photographing like when you would go out with your friends like parties and stuff yeah definitely like um uh, film like point and shoots mm -hmm you know, the little disposables, or maybe I'd come across like a thrift and I would buy a point and shoot. It would work for maybe like a roll. And then I would, you know, it was just like always experimenting with film, I think was fascinating to me. And is something I still enjoy about the medium is not being able to review my image right away. So I'm really relying on, yeah, this is going to be a good image. So I'm going to, I'm going to use this roll or like this exposure for the moment. Um, and then I'll get them back whenever I develop them. So mm -hmm. it's kind of how I got into photographing and then a big jump in me discovering I wanted to be an artist was going to Cuba. I think I was like 17, I had just graduated high school and I brought like four or five rolls of film. And when I got them developed, I was like, whoa, these are um, beyond me, I guess, like beyond what I thought knew I was capable of and really proved to me that I had some, an eye that I had to share. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was like a pivotal moment for me, I think. Would you say that that's the moment that you decided, like, I want to be a photographer, like, I believe I can do this because I'm pretty yeah. yeah, I think um, I was really fascinated by Vice at the time. Like as a young high schooler, I, I was obsessed with the raw and like weird topics they would cover. And so mm -hmm. going to Cuba and then seeing like communism firsthand and thinking about my family and like where my roots come from and then photographing um, just felt right for me and um, really put me in a place where I was like, I wanna photograph to show the world how I see things and what I deem to be important. And that's kind of how I got into that. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. That's beautiful. What do you think makes you so attracted to human beings? Because you said that that's what you love to photograph the most. So what is that? What is it about a human being that you can see? Like, who do you usually want to photograph? Who do I usually want to photograph? That's a great question. Um, I don't know if it's so much like who I want to photograph. If, well, okay, I think it changes, right? So there's always specific friends I want to photograph maybe because I know them and I want to photograph them in an intimate format or like a, a different way than like that I know I can capture. And knowing somebody always make like, and then photographing them always makes it really special. But I think for example, like when I was in Cuba photographing some orphans that I worked with, um, I, I, you kind of have to build a relationship first. Like you kind of have to build this trust and then you can utilize the camera. 
because the camera can be almost like a weapon if you don't build like a bridge between like empathy between human and human, right? So I think that um, is important to me and I always try and be aware of that. But I guess a simpler answer is um, humans are beautiful and I think they're meant to be photographed. And um, a lot of the work that I do does stem from um, wanting to put people who are not really seen on a platform or maybe like seen in a different way. You know, uh, film photography has a very raw sense of capturing in general. So I think um, if you do it properly or if you have the right intention in your heart and in your artistry, you can capture people really well, especially through the media medium of, of film. So, um, yeah, I mean, mission work as well goes hand in hand with that, you know, volunteer work and going out and helping others and then you get to photograph, right? Like photographing is just like a side to helping others. So you mentioned a lot of vulnerability and rawness. And when you said vice, I was like, oh, well, that's literally, literally topics that we don't usually talk about. So I find it very interesting. Um, so wait because a question just flew by me and it was so good because i really needed to know this um so yeah a lot of vulnerability a lot of rawness and a lot of um so you mentioned charity work like missions or charity work both is the same you thing. know I, i'm st i feel like i'm still trying to figure out where i lie with or what to even call it because a lot of my work that i do in other countries um is all around skateboarding like I always do skateboarding missions or I call them missions because I'm a Christian so I'm like oh I'm gonna bring God along anyways because that's just what kind of how I flow right. but um I've done two so I did one in Cuba and then I just recently did one in Palestine two years ago and that is like all like that's just the way that I photograph as well is like being able to connect with the children through skateboarding showing them a way to kind of like lose themselves in an activity using their bodies and their mind um, and then I get to photograph so do you do you skateboard I don't skateboard anymore okay. I use skateboard nothing crazy I mean I would skateboard enough to be able to teach somebody how to push and how to like get comfortable on a board Mm -hmm. um, I don't skateboard currently just because it hasn't really been a focus of mine right something I, I care a lot about um, and I kind of always find myself coming back to maybe I'll do another skateboarding trip or maybe I'll just hit up my friends who skateboard and go photograph them but um, as of as of now it's not really important to me in, in my practice I guess like as a photographer so how did you how did you get into the skateboarding world I mean it's very like interesting because yeah. um, did you always enjoy watching skateboarders and you were like oh like I'll go on the trip with you guys or how did that how did that come to life yeah somebody showed me um this but it comes back to vice right so uh, they just have such a way of pulling me and they still do vice is, is like an incredible source for me um, and the way that they film and document is like really interesting. But um, there was a, a documentary called Epically Latered, which is basically little shorts about skateboarders who maybe fell out of the scene due to drugs or alcohol or um, violence or, or whatever, whatever it may be. Some of them maybe got sick or injured. Um, and somebody had showed me a video of this one skater named Antoine Dixon. Mm -hmm. And then I just became obsessed. Like I was so fascinated with the way he could skateboard almost like lyrically. Like it was like he was dancing with the skateboard or just impeccable movement. So then I started going out and photographing at the local skate parks and making, I realized a lot of my friends ended up being skateboarders. Like I just wow. at a young age um, threw myself into the scene, whether I, was relevant or not I found a space for myself mm -hmm. and I think the camera helped me find a little knit you know like find a way to connect to these people and then eventually connecting to kids like younger kids yeah so you like working with kids 
yeah I enjoy it like um anywhere from like young kids to teenagers or even like young adults um I think I mean I'm I'm gonna be 24 in August so it's easy for me to to hang out and goof around you know but how come do you know why you're so attracted to like is it their innocence or the way of just like being so pure and being like this is just one phase like they don't have um I guess like I really only pay attention to children when when it comes to skateboarding because I mean yeah I, I, I see a child like they're beautiful and they do have this sense of childlike wonder and innocence but with skateboarding it's like they're so fearless and I was never like that as a kid or no and no one introduced me to skateboarding at a young age so like a lot of the kids in Palestine would just throw themselves everywhere like there was no fear and I find that to be so beautiful to watch and it really inspired me to even just get on the board and, and like move past the fear of falling move past the fear of like even judgment as a girl oh yeah judgment of like um man like these guys are so much better than me or these people are so much better than me and I'm just like this girl who really shouldn't be on a skateboard so like in in the Middle East that really broke that boundary for me um and it made it important for me to be the teacher at the time at the skate park who was a girl skateboarding so I could show all these younger girls like you can do it too and we can all skate together regardless of this being a male-dominated sport right right um when did you 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 keep you keep referring to bias right so what was that one story is it the one about the skateboarder that you said wow like I want to do something like that like I want to photograph someone um that is like in that world and I can capture it with my eye what with my camera was it that one or you remember another one that caught your attention you're refer you're referring to the video that I watched when I was younger that got me into skateboarding mm -hmm. um yeah I mean I think photography like what was the photography part of it that one too well I was watching videos of skateboarding and then when you photograph it it just becomes like a, a still image so the images I started to produce were also like very interesting in themselves and I think was a navigator for me to learn how to photograph and learning what movements I wanted to capture right uh, you know it's, it's photography really is just a tool and was a big tool for me I think in the skateboarding world uh, for like the time being that's what it served as you know I agree yes yeah. totally Lords of Dogtown I saw that that movie it's yeah like, yeah oh I, no I've seen them all I've um, seen all of them I wanted to skateboard after that and then I'm like I'm kidding I'm not like I don't <laughs> Like you said, that fearless spirit? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um, I still love it, though. Um, well, do you remember that first photograph, that first shot that you were so proud of, that you were like, I want to hang that up? What was yeah. that? Yeah, I do. Um, my first image that I felt that way about was, um, you can find it on my Instagram. It's um, an image of a woman on a bus in Cuba. She's like looking out of the window. Yeah. And, um, that image to me was like mind blowing. I also feel like there's like a lot of primary colors in the in the image. Like, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? The um, the frame itself is beautifully put together. And at the time, like I wasn't trained at all in photography. So even looking back at it now, I'm like still like, this is insane that I could capture an image like this. But yeah, I remember feeling that way. Mm -hmm. You think that um, people are born photographers or they can learn to become a photographer? That's a great question. I've never thought about that. Um, I feel like everyone could, uh, everyone essentially is a photographer. This is actually something I think about with the iPhone. Like I feel like, you capture a really yeah. decent image um, but there's photographers that just that I look up to that I can never create images like them I'm sure there's people who look at my images and say they can never create work like mine so it's it's not so much about like being born into 
being a photographer, but more about like really honing in on the vision that you have with your camera, that's going to set you apart from everyone else, right? Right. Yeah. When did you, when did you become confident about being a photographer? Was it New World? <laughs> um, I feel like every day I have to work on being confident when being a photographer. And that's just me being straight up because I'm not going to be here like, I have it all together. And yeah, on know. September of, <laughs> you know, 2000, I figured it out. Like, yeah, um, there was a lot of things in New World that challenged me and a lot of moments where I felt like I could be a painter, I could be a sculptor, I could be, I could do all these different things. And why am I only using photography? And I did create a lot of uh, 3D work with my photos in New World, that was really enjoyable for me and I and took me away from just like photographing, printing it and framing it, you know? So I was like able to make it interactive and make this like space for people to experience my photographs. Wow. So I feel like I'm always learning and even those big projects that I've done, I had to really tell myself like, uh, leave room for trial and error, like leave room for experimentation. So are you glad you went to school for photography or, or um, would you say, oh, yeah, it was great, but I don't think you always need it. Or what are your thoughts on that? I've asked you this before, but obviously not on. <laughs> okay. Um, when I first graduated, I definitely was like, it was like the week after I graduated. I was like, why did I do that? Like, why do I have a photo? A photo uh, degree right because it's like what am I gonna do with it now but I wouldn't I would not study I wouldn't have studied anything else like I feel like there's a reason why right I photography and the amount of work that I learned and the amount of mediums I learned to work with and even just like training my mind to think conceptually is important for me and is a journey that will continue to reveal itself. I may not know exactly why right now, but I have full confidence that one day there will be like a bigger aha moment for me where I'm like, oh, this is why I got a degree. Mm -hmm. um, but I also acknowledge I'm someone who wears like many hats. And if I could go back to school or if I do go back to school, I'd probably go to culinary school, which is just like a whole other art form for me. So, um, I think it's important if you want to be an artist, but I don't think it's necessary. But I do think it's important. If you have the means to get an education, you should. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I don't want to be here, like, don't go to art school. You don't need it. Like, go to school. I love to learn, so. And that experience, no one could ever take that away from you. I mean, that was a lot of time in school. So how, I mean. Yeah, I agree. Um, so let's talk about In Their Glory, your project for your graduation um, from yeah. the world. Talk to us. Talk to me about it. In Their Glory. I actually have some some test runs up on the wall. These are some ones that just didn't make the cut, but they're still, they're still there. Um, I think it's important to mention within their glory some background pieces that I had done or like just some background history of how I even got into talking about the menstrual cycle um, and why I deemed it so important to do a whole thesis on it, right? It's like a whole year of working on a project, so. Wow, a whole year, okay. Yeah, it is the first, it's your whole like first and second semester of senior year, so. Um, my sister, Nicole, she had gone on like an 11th month mission trip I think it was in 2014, I could be wrong, but she spent like a good amount of time in Africa and she had come home and told me about this village that she was living in. It was called um, Nakata Bay, it's like by the lake. And one of her projects was that she was helping women to learn about their menstrual cycle and also giving them the resources to make sanitary napkins and reusable pads and kind of just teaching them the importance of taking care of your of your menstrual hygiene um, and that blew my mind like that rocked my world that women didn't one have the resources or two even the education to know um, that 
you like this happens once a month and you don't have to be ashamed or you don't have to be like seen as any different or incapable of going about your day so that's something that um that's how they looked at them yeah so it's also common in india like there's a documentary called period end of sentence where they also speak about this i'm gonna watch it okay period end of sentence it's really good mm -hmm. um, so i had been like fascinated about it and then i kind of was just like oh well i i think here in the U.S., the menstrual cycle should be spoken about more, at least in my friend group and like amongst men, uh, amongst people who maybe just didn't want to acknowledge it. So I like kind of set this mission to start breaking down these walls that even I had ingrained in myself. So I had done a performance piece my first semester of New World. It was called um, Hues of Red, where I basically dressed in all white and then I menstruated in front of the class for like I think it was like a minute or so and I was eating oranges and the fruit like represents fertility which is like directly tied to the menstrual cycle wow that's incredible and then I proceeded to like take my pants off and nail them into the wall like an art piece right and then I just that was the end of my, my but you were fully naked like no I was wearing some like spandex underneath okay uh, yeah and he was like I was like wow Lauren <laughs> um okay so so that was my first and yeah. you were menstruating like well it was it I wasn't like menstruating at the time so I had to like play actually my professors told me please don't use real blood so yeah that's why I was very interested in that like if they allowed it to happen no they definitely um, yeah wow, that's incredible I wish I would have seen that I have I have video footage. I'll definitely show you. Please, I want to see. Yeah. Okay. So, wow. Uh huh. What happened after that? Like, well, I guess like that is important to me to mention because that whole story is like kind of how I got into talking about the mental. Right. I didn't talk about it since that piece until in their glory. So, in their glory was a was um, a project that I made that was made over basically over the pandemic um, so I had no inspiration to go out and shoot I really was like what am I going to do for my project um, and I started creating like Rorschach imagery out of uh, faux blood as well out of fake blood and I made like 250 Rorschachs so like a Rorschach is a psychological test of ink blots mm -hmm. if you're familiar they like mirrored ink blots and they're used in psychology and they're used to kind of get an understanding of someone's mental frame, like where they're at. Um, they're shown rapidly and you're supposed to say like, oh, I see this, I see a duck, I see a tree, right? So I started making Rorschachs out of fake blood and I started using the scanner as a, as a camera. So I started scanning all of them and that was like kind of my, my camera was my scanner in my room and um how do you yeah. the, how do you make the the Rorschachs yeah like the, the even the images and everything so the Rorschachs were on watercolor paper and I used fake blood from Party City and I would just sit there for hours and fold the paper in half and then I would uh maybe put a lot of drops or a couple of drops depending on like I didn't really have much control over the image. I just had control over the liquid. Mm -hmm. And then I would fold them and I would open them up, look at the image and then create another one. So I was kind of just like moving all these images and then I would let them dry and I would scan them. Wow. Right, so. How long did this take you? I think making the Rorschachs probably took me like, like a month and a half, you know? Um, the first, the beginning of senior year, I kind of was like, I don't know what the heck I'm going to do. So that was like, took me a month to figure out the concept, how I was going to do it. And then I started making the images and that took me like another month and a half. By January, I was already formatting them. Like I was already figuring out how I wanted to display them in the gallery. And how did you, how did you come up with the idea when you were like, I have no idea what to do. I'm stuck. I don't feel inspired tired what am I gonna do how did you how did that happen like how did your brain connect to that right um I started just like asking myself basic questions like you kind of just have to like look at yourself as like what do you care about like what do you want to talk about so um I was like I care about 
the menstrual cycle and I care about um, making a comfortable topic and um, bringing awareness to it for women who don't have like the resources or the education to know that you don't have to feel ashamed or uncleanly for having a very natural part of your body menstruate, you know? Um, so I think once I came back to this topic, I was like, okay, cool. So now I have a topic and how do I want to go about, how do I want to go about um, photographing this or even just making an art piece? Like at the time it wasn't even about photography anymore. It was more about just like, how do I, how do I put this message out there? And I really wanted it to be like, not a cliche. Like I didn't want it to be like someone on the bed and like their pants are stained, you know? which yeah. has been done and it was beautiful in, in its context, but I just didn't want to do that. Right. Yeah. So, so then I, um, I was like, well, I want, I want the menstrual cycle to like, I want it to be like informative and I want it to be like kind of in your face, but I didn't want it to be like grotesque. So I started to make like the Rorschachs are really beautiful. You know, they if you look at them and have no idea that it's supposed to be menstrual blood. I don't know. Yeah. I just, yeah it was like art you know which it is yeah. art, but you don't know it's menstrual uh blood right right so um I kind of was just like this is a little comical right because they're like these really beautiful images and um I knew people were going to come to the gallery and look at it and and probably not read the description and just be like that's pretty cool and then walk away so that to me is is funny because happen at the day of the showing uh probably yeah like a um like I, I can't say that it exactly happened but I'm sure it did like I have no doubt that there's pieces that I see in galleries that I'm like oh cool and then just keep walking right like I won't always read the description of something mm -hmm. I have no doubt that people probably did that for my piece and, and that's fine I'm okay with that like that's you know I, I don't mind I think that's a part of putting your artwork out there but yeah my my piece was kind of just like the Rorschach was a, a navigation of a test like I was testing the audience like I was testing the audience to see like how would you react to a menstrual cycle like what is your what is your perspective on the menstrual cycle how do you feel about it does it make you uncomfortable does it make you oh at peace because I can relate to it you know um and then so another important topic in my or I guess it's not really a topic. It's more of just like a side note. In their glory, I chose not to use in her glory because I wanted to be inclusive for bodies that don't identify as wow. women. So like non-binary or trans who, who are still experiencing the menstrual cycle. And I can't even imagine, you know, like as somebody who's transitioning into a man to still be menstruating. I mean, it's a very feminine thing to experience so a classmate had brought that up to me he was like hey you should probably be inclusive and I was like yeah that's really important I had no idea I had never considered that wow that's brilliant good for that classmate yeah he's awesome so or they're awesome so um, yeah that that's important that was important to me and definitely like a something I didn't think about in the entire piece like until the last yeah the last month where I had to name it like <laughs> the worst part of any art piece is naming it like I'm like oh my gosh it's like naming a song or naming an album yeah is there anything else you want to say about the project um I had I had um the like format of them was on Kodak slides it was like Kodachrome slides that I had a, a lab, I think in Minnesota, they, they formatted them for me. So the piece was a projector on the wall and then like each Rorschach would play. So it was very much like a, a test, you know, it was very much a simulation, the, like simulation of that. So that's something I was really proud of with the piece. I was able to create an experience with it. And then aside from the projector, I had 28 images on the wall that were printed out and they were laid out in a calendar format to represent like the oh the monthly like yeah exactly yeah so there's 28 images because a cycle is 28 days right. normally. 
Yeah, so. which we just found out, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah. This week. Crazy. And you, I mean, you know, it's like, <laughs> um, that's so incredible and intriguing. Uh, yeah, is that how you say it? Intriguing. Um, yeah. So did everyone get a pick in your class to show at, um, what's the, the void, is it called? Um, the more building. Yes. Did yeah. everyone get a pick? Did I, anyone have a what? I'm sorry. Did everyone get um to show their their project to oh, yeah. the audience? Yeah. How was that process for you? Had you ever sh shown project that kind of project before to the public? Uh, I did one show prior to this one that was like for me the same like caliber of a show. Like I did, it was at the Campong. Um, which is like the Kampong is um, in Coconut Grove. We had an Art Basel show there for one day. And that process was a six month, six month process of an art piece. I did it for a sculpture class um, where everyone else in that class, if you made a piece, if you're successful in making the piece you would show. Um, and that was very intense. It was a really, it was an awesome show. It was great. Um, I feel like, I'm not like, yes, I pay attention to my classmates work. I'm not too critical about it where I'm like, this doesn't belong in the show. I feel like everyone definitely deserves a space. Um, and that show at the Camp Pong worked, all the pieces worked together. I think um, for, I think it was called in, Enter the Void, Into the Void. Into the Void, yeah. I feel like I'm butchering it, but I forgot the title of her show. I should know this. It is Into the Void. Um, it's oh, no. Unspecified Void. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Void is the Gaspar Noe film. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's the film. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Did I feel like every piece worked together in that show? No, but that's okay because it's a thesis show. Like, it's like everyone's passion projects for their college experience so like I don't really I don't really mind that it didn't go together entirely like that's kind of expected in, in, in a thesis show so so that was I mean I think everyone tried their absolute best I mean our entire senior year was over zoom so and we didn't have studios like we didn't have any access like a space so a lot of it was made in your bedroom or in your living room or you know at whatever space you could find so what was the pros about that what was the pros there had to be something good about doing it everything doing things from home did it make it more personal for you or did it complicate it because you were in your personal space and you were trying to get creative um i think yeah um it's hard to separate like home life from your like work life so at some point, like, yes, I was like, oh, this is challenging. But because I was graduating, because I had to produce, and I wanted to, of course, um, at some point, you can't even let that those thoughts creep and you just have to keep working. And um, I just kept coming back to like, okay, do I care about this enough to pursue it for a whole year? And if that's the case, then let me just keep going like as hard as I can on this topic. Right. Um, but there are some some classmates of mine that it was very challenging for them. Um, luckily, my, I, I kept my media, my project and medium in the parameters of my home. It could fit in my room. I could put it in a suitcase and travel with it, you know. But I do have some, some a classmate, she's a sculptor, and I know that she had a hard time making her piece, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she lives in an apartment, so for her to make like a full-fledged sculpture is was difficult for her and I can't even imagine you know as compared to having a studio where you can throw stuff everywhere and right so. did you get to show in their glory more than a day I'm not sure yeah a whole week the piece was up for I think three weeks oh my god that's a long time yeah yeah it was awesome yeah. so did you go all days all three weeks no no oh god no no, <laughs> I live in Kendall. That um, <laughs> I was there every day. Um, that's awesome. That would be great if somebody was there every day. But no, I wasn't. 
but did you did you get to see the audience the public watch your stuff and what did you think what was that moment can you tell me a little bit about did you see something did it work did someone was like oh, menstrual period what no idea or they were just like mm. I didn't really see I didn't really see much like a lot of it was the first opening day and all my friends and family were like we're so proud of you and ah, I was like all these emotions I'm nervous I'm sweating like you know um, is my projector working is everything in line did something know? go wrong what's up did something go wrong or something oh, yeah. my projector for sure <laughs> that damn projector and um it's like vintage right so how am I supposed to, how am I supposed to expect it to work when in, in this digital age and yeah exactly. I guess the, the bulb like exploded on me a couple times that's we got some new bulbs um it was overheating it was making weird noises but at some point I was like you know this just adds to the piece and um I just take sure. that route of I'll let it I'll let it do its thing but yeah, as far as the audience, like my friends, my friends and family were definitely very proud of me and they understood I was able to like speak about the topic and people were be able to ask me questions, but I didn't see much of, like, I didn't really people watch. I didn't really like look at other people. I saw a couple of people walk in and out um, and that was pretty much it. I mean, I guess I didn't do it. I should have. I maybe. I mean, that's an interesting point. I didn't think about that. I didn't think about like let me watch other people react to my piece. But um, I think it it just kind of shows a little bit that you do art for, like, you just put it out there, which is great because you're not ex like, it's not like oh my gosh, what is the public gonna say? You're still gonna create because it doesn't really control much of your creativity, and I think that's pretty cool pretty badass maybe ask me. um so are you taking a break now because you're out of school is that what you're up to have you been photographing anything what are you up to now um I'm definitely still photographing I don't think there's much of a season for taking a break right now um as far as like making a really big project yes I don't have any drive right now to be working on a, a big project um I've been doing a lot of portraits. I've been doing a lot of headshots. Oh, yeah. Some... yeah, I've been doing headshots for people who need them. And I just like make some cash. Can you have shots? <laughs> yeah, let me know. I'll definitely take your headshot. I look very different. Like, I mean, I'm not working much on that, but I still like to keep headshots with me. Yes. So um, let's definitely talk after about price and everything because I'm so excited. Um. Yeah, we can do that for sure. I have no problem. I just did one yesterday for my friend. She's going to uh, law school, so she needs one. She needs. One. But um, I have some friends who are like musicians. So I have a friend named Kaylin that I photographed him recently just to make some some um, content for him. Like I had been wanting to photograph him for a while, and then I finally found the time, so I took some some um, interesting images of him. Um, and then I like kind of just let him use it for whatever he may want to use it for in the future. I love that so much. It's all about content now. It's all about how everything looks in a way. Um, yes, that is very true. That is very true. Um, were you ever interested in the film side of things? Because you like film. Were yeah. you ever like, ooh, I'm like there to crossing even either being a photographer like BTS for like a film crew or actual films like shooting a film. Man, like in high school, I was obsessed with like editing. Um, a lot of like little, I know. You don't hear that ever. Like, <laughs> well, I don't know. I had like a, I had like a news segment. I had like SAT word of the day. So I had to, I had to film myself saying the, SAT word and then I would have to edit it and turn it in by a certain time so I was really into that um but it's funny that you mention it because I I recently just purchased a super eight camera which is like a super eight eight millimeter Kodak camera um so I've been filming on that mm -hmm. and um we'll see what the film looks like I think there is definitely an interest in 
filming or being like uh, behind the scenes or um, assistant. You know, I don't even know what the roles are, but I would love to be on set. And, and yeah, as a photographer, you can totally do that. That's why I asked you because I'm like, and you know what's really rare and I'm sick of? Um, not enough women, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, it's just really frustrating because when you go on a set, you see all these males and you try to find a woman because we have, you know, women, men, I believe they can bring something different. Um, there's a story about a woman that like, if a woman talks about it, it's like more personal. And a lot of times they bring women perspective so that they can help with women characters, right? right uh, because there's also not enough women directors but um but that's why I thought of you because um there's something your eye can see that a male might not be able to catch and yeah. um, vice versa too you know I'm not discriminating or anything but um, yeah. I do say that there's not enough women and we'll talk about that later on too personally um interesting hmm so who is the coolest person that you've ever worked with? I'm like, I just like four names popped in my head. That's why I was like, who? oh, and no, like a bunch of people just popped up in my head. That's why I'm laughing. Recently, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, like the coolest person. And I really, <laughs> I'm like, I need to shout him out because he's just an awesome person. And he taught me a lot. My sculpture professor at New World. Um, his name is Donald Lambert, and that guy is, he bounces off the walls, and his head, his brain is, like, constantly moving, constantly creating, and um, at first, it was very overwhelming to be his student, but I learned a lot from him. I learned a lot how to work with tools, um, and he had a big, a big hand in, in me getting out of my comfort zone. So, oh, hi. Oh, hi there. <laughs> Vicky. <laughs> I can't with him. He's telling me that he just ate. <laughs> this looks so, like, I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> Vicky. That is so cute. I can't. I'm so, I'm so rude. I'm so late. I'm sorry. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Please, you, you need to get a photo shoot with Lauren. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so definitely, definitely Donald Lambert. Um, he's a sculptor. You should check out his work. If, if you're into to sculpture, he's just, he's awesome. And it's probably one of my fondest memories from your world. Uh, please cherish that. Shout out. I love that so much. Um, uh, who's, who's your favorite photographer? Oh, <laughs> that's hard, right? I'm looking at a Clyde Butcher right book right now. He's okay. not my favorite, but I do love him. He's a he's a local photographer. He shoots in the Everglades. He's known for photographing the Everglades. Oh wow! I need to look into him. Um, so Clyde Butcher is awesome, but I want to say my favorite photographer is a tie between <laughs> Nan Golden. Mm -hmm um nan golden and no it's nan golden there's no tie it's it is that is my favorite photographer by far oh i've seen her photography before there's that famous like man sitting smoking a cigarette is yeah, that it's, she just has like so there's so much intimacy wow i just saw i mean you're giving me gold here to like research nan golden the Ballad of Sexual Dependency. Yeah, yeah, amazing, amazing work. Oh my gosh. Um, does music inspire you to shoot? Do you need music? That's what I mean. Do you need music to like get inspired or do you get inspired in silence? Like kind of like, hmm. I would say like, I don't need it. Like I'm now I'm thinking about all the times I've photographed. Uh, um, and I, I'm probably a majority of them aren't with music in the background. Like, I'm not like, hold on, let me put on my playlist before I photograph. I do love music a lot. I would say that's like my first medium I ever loved, like, or art that I ever loved. Right. Music. Can you hear the rain? 
Sorry, it's like my right here. Hold on, give me one second. Come down. Don't do this. I feel like I have a child. Okay, I'm back. Um, next question, Ziggy interrupted again. I feel like I have a child. Um, what's the coolest thing you've ever photographed? <laughs> the coolest thing I ever photographed? Um, the skateboarder I mentioned earlier. Yeah. On Dixon. I photographed him. Well, I photographed him. Um, I was. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Trust me. Here it's thundering, lightning. Is it him? Yeah. Yeah. That's him. Never seen him. So I photographed him when I was like 18. Uh, I, I like flew out to California to vacation and then ended up photographing him um, because he had messaged me. <laughs> I was so young. I'm gonna sit on my bed because I'm like right by the window. Um, he had messaged me and was like, "Hey, when are you coming to California?" And I was like, "Um, in three months." Totally was like, not even planning on it. And then my sister came up to me and was like, "Hey, you want to go to California?" And I was like, "Yes, I do. I actually have a little gig that I want to follow up with." Mind you, I was so young. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and then I and then. I flew into California, we got a rental car. I brought two of my other friends. And before we did anything, I called him and was like, I'm in California, do you wanna, do you wanna skateboard for me? And I'll photograph you. And then I photographed him for like a couple hours. And so I say that was definitely one of the, one of the best and coolest experiences I've had. That's super cool. Wow. God was changed. It was definitely like, I don't know why this amazing skateboarder would reach out to this random person from Kendall but I mean that's scary because he's older right so I mean thank god nothing weird happened um no I brought I brought my sister <laughs> she was like what the heck she was like what are we doing <laughs> I'm not going nowhere <laughs> no. um did you ever think about applying for advice with your photography um not necessarily I feel like I've had some friends who worked for them and then they kind of said like it wasn't the best um really? workplace or experience but I'm not opposed to it because like I can only base off of my own experiences so I really I guess I just haven't looked into it I mean yeah. not everyone's experience is the same like they don't you know what happened it's not the same thing and also you're you're grown and I mean, what God has for you, God has for you. Um, just you just never know. Um, yeah. What's been the saddest photograph you've ever taken? Oh my gosh, the saddest photograph I ever took. My grandmother was in the hospital. Um, I think she was like, it was like a couple, like maybe a week before her ninety second birthday. I think that was her last birthday. It was her 92nd birthday. And she was lying on the hospital bed with the, like, mask on her face. And at the time, I was shooting a self-portrait project for my Miami-Dade class. And I just, like, was hanging out with her in the hospital. She was totally, she couldn't, she didn't, she, her eyes weren't even open. Like, she wasn't with it at all. She probably didn't even know I was there. But I just photographed her, like I set it up on a self timer and I photographed her and I and I was just looking at her and I was like touching her hand. Um, and yeah, I took that photograph and the, everything about it came out great. The lighting, the placement, the whole construction of the image came out good. And I, I guess I didn't, I was kind of numb to the fact my grandmother was dying. And I took the image to my photo professor and then he was just like are you sure you want to keep this image and I was like yeah of course I want to keep the image it's a good image like what are you talking about you know yeah. and he's like because this is like you're gonna have this forever like this is always you know you'll always you'll have it forever you're always gonna remember this yeah. so um that I think it's an image I don't come back to often I also never like 
did anything with it. I just have it. But that was probably the saddest photo I've ever taken to this day. Yeah. I have, yeah, I have an image of my, that's my grandmother right there. And that's me as a child. Oh, that's a, wow. I was like super close to her. So yeah, I've made a couple things. I've made like some things about her, like some work after that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. that, I mean, yeah, may she rest in peace. That must have been. Um, who's been your? Are there any photographers in your family? Yeah, my uh, my aunt, my aunt Martha. Yeah, my and middle she, name is Martha. So. Oh, it's, look at that! Yeah, it's weird. It's weird, and every day, every any time that I question if I should be doing photography. I think about like everything that God has placed in my life, especially the fact that I have an aunt who was a practicing OBGYN almost her entire career and then retired, unfortunately, due to a disability. And then she just became like a kick-ass photographer because she was bored. And she acquired a bunch of equipment that is now my equipment. And I just don't think that that is by coincidence like it's definitely by design like I definitely think God has crafted out a special road for me and and has given me way more than I could ever imagine you know yeah that's so beautiful yeah I think maybe that's why you like vintage so much like you're really into film and super a camera and all this great stuff that like it's so unique yeah. this was awesome oh thanks <laughs> is there anything else you want to mention about your photography about um anything I don't know what what it what you I'm gonna I still have some questions we're gonna go into a segment called ATM which is at the moment which is I'm gonna ask you questions that you have to answer in the moment that you're like okay my favorite food at the moment my favorite artist at the moment things like that okay. um for that. that do you want to say anything else um i guess um i guess like if anyone's watching this and is curious about being a photographer or curious about creating art like just go for it um i feel like a lot of my years leading up to where I'm at now, I was always questioning. I was always like, or always feeling like I wasn't good enough, like always feeling that my art wasn't good enough. Um, and it robbed me a lot of, of even seeing what I was creating in the moment. Cause I look back at things I've made and I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Um, but just, yeah, um, I wanna encourage people because it took me a while. It's still something I have to work on. It's still something I have to be gentle with myself about and um just keep creating like it's it's worth it and you're doing the world a disservice when you don't show what you can create you know so that's all I gotta say about that that's absolutely incredible you just encourage me in my creative side I mean you're so right I think we think so much about things and God has given us this gift and this like passion we feel for what we do when we are creating like why not use it right oh my god it's been such a pleasure thanks this thanks. Incredible. i'm so happy okay so now we're going to atm questions but first you gotta give me a number from five to twenty Ooh. seven perfect so I'm going to ask you seven ATM questions. Are you ready? Okay. What's your guilty pleasure? Oh, Justin Bieber. Ooh, really? Ooh, okay. It's it's his music, dude. Like, I I never tell people that I'm like, yeah, I can listen to a little Justin Bieber. But that is, yeah, it's a, that's a guilty. It's not like him. I'm not like, oh, my God, he's not cute. It's not him. It's the music. So Creativity. I like that. Well, your favorite movie? Um, I should know it. It's my favorite movie. What's the name of this movie? 
um, to the Wes Anderson film. Oh, Grand Budapest Hotel. Okay, haven't seen it. I have to. Uh, sure. Do you prefer day or night? Day. What do you believe in? I believe in. I believe in. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus Christ. But I believe in humanity. I believe people are innately good. I believe so. that's beautiful. Who's your celebrity crush? Probably, probably Miley Cyrus. Oh really? Oh, yeah. Like I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're, like I'm attracted to men, but I'd love my like. No, I know. Like I'm not like, oh, I don't want to say someone just because they're hot. Like I love Miley Cyrus because she's just unapologetically herself. I love that. I don't even know who I would say. I don't know. Um, no, no. Favorite snack? Right now, goldfish. Mm, oh my god. I haven't had goldfish in forever. I need some now. Um and ooh, the final one seven because you picked seven favorite artists at the moment like musician or can it be a musician yeah for sure favorite artist at the moment i've been listening to a lot of is claro who claro 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 c-l-a-i-r-o i-r-o claro okay claro I just came out with an album named sling I really been been listening to that um, artist a lot, especially that album. It's really good. But I love James Blake too. So mm, I love James Blake since yeah. Retro. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> so those I've been bouncing back and forth. So I do have a final question for you. Where do you get your style? You're very unique. You're very. I don't know how to describe it, but you have little details. It's all in the details. Where do you where do you get your style? I guess who's your influence that you're like, oh, like your hair, your hairstyle, your hair color, your outfits. Um, honestly, I don't. It's so cliche. I really don't have a style influence like. I love a lot of like bell bottoms and high waisted. I love a good scrunchy jewelry. Mm -hmm. So like if I had to categorize it, maybe like a nine an eighties vibe, you know, seventies, yeah. eighties. But um, I think there's also parts of me that are very modern, like a um, a nice jacket, like a trench coat or something. So I see that and sixties. Yeah, like a staple for me though, like you will always find me wearing boots. Like I'm always wearing leather boots. But it's just, I'm, and if not, I'm right wearing running shoes, like, you know, to go because I'm on the road, but definitely boots. So I don't know. My I style know. is like, it's always up in the air. That's the type of style that I love. The one that it's like, I don't know, I just wake up. Listen, thank you so much for being in this uh, talk show with me. It was so interesting. I'm so grateful I got to interview you. I mean, you're like one of the coolest people I've known in Miami. Um, awesome. And I can't wait to see you again. So thank you. You're incredible. I can't wait to see more of what you're going to do next and what God is going to take you yeah. to. Who knows? Because God just has amazing plans for us and we just don't even have an idea so um thank you. Yeah, thank you thank you so much i was very happy to be here so thank you oh, I thank you i'll see you soon okay